Yeah. Ardabi, you are going to start the event, right? Technically. Yeah, I will just start the event, turn off my camera, and just watch. In, in Ardabi Trust. Mostly, yeah. Mostly, 99%. Um, Maxim, are you there? Just to double check. Okay. Your video was off. I get anxious. Like, <laughs> you know. Okay. I'm anxious. Or okay. <laughs> Calm down. Easy. It's your job to be anxious. It's my job to be anxious. I think it says on my business card at Elam, the anxious one. Um. But that's okay. If, if okay. you and me are anxious, then everything's going perfectly and we can stop being yeah. anxious. So it's 15. I'm starting the webinar. Uh, I wish the best luck to you all. And thank you once again for your time and effort. Thank you. Thank Last you. Have a good night. Go ahead. Video, we can stop. Okay. Hey, Bismillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, greetings from Indonesia. Good evening, everyone. It is uh, 15 minutes past 6 p.m. here in Indonesia and approximately 15 minutes past 12 p.m. in Vienna time, I think. So good evening, distinguished speakers and representatives from the YSLI, the Turkish Green Crescent, and also the host from the Green Crescent Indonesia. Also for everybody uh, who has joining uh, the event this evening. We would like to welcome you all to the site event at the 65th session of the UN Commission on Narcotic Drugs, CND, that has already, be, already been happening from the 14th until uh, 14 of March until today. So today is the last day. We are very delighted to host this uh, fruitful sessions uh, this time onward in approximately 60 minutes. And thank you again for the committee for allowing us hosting such important site event and for all the participants who has joined in the room. We thank you for joining. Um, this evening, our site event will be bringing about an interesting topic that is relevant and rela relatable in the context of accessibility, how the digital tools can be used in prevention and intervention activities. Yes, you, have, you heard that right. Digital tools nowadays have been increasingly useful as one of the tools in prevention as well as intervention for addictions. Gadgets have become an inherent daily uh, device in life, but can we really use it as a tool to prevent and treat addiction or other behavioral disorders? We will find out during this event uh, this, event, this evening. So without further ado, uh, we would like to invite the president of the Green Crescent Indonesia, Dr. Era Chatur Prasetya, uh, psychiatrist, please join us and deliver your remarks. So, Dr. Chatur, please welcome. Thank you, Dr. Ida. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for coming in this event. I'm Ella Chatur Pastia. Uh, yeah. It is such, uh, an honor for me. You want to see for the for you? Oh, yeah. Of the Green Crescent Indonesia. Let me begin uh, by giving you a warm welcome to the 65 CND site, even in the context of accessible 
how the digital tools can be used in prevention and intervention uh, activities. I would like to express my appreciation to the VNGOC committee, the Turkish Green Vision, LM Youth in Distress, and National Anti Drug Union, which co sponsor uh, for this event and <laughs> seminar come true. Mr. Kemal Altin, Mr. Roy Homrie, oh. Mr. Maxim Kolia, and Ms. Lina Udakova. Thank you very much. In today's uh, side event, we will discuss how the digital tools can be used in addiction prevention and intervention activity because it is look impossible to not contact with digital tools today. Well, uh, I would like to say once more on behalf of Green Peace in Indonesia, welcome. It's great to meet you here. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, thank you, Dr. Chatur, for your kind and thoughtful words. Uh, now we are coming to the main program, that is uh, the presentation from four distinguished speakers. Each speaker will give about 10 minutes presentation. And after everyone has presented, we will have around 10 minutes uh, for discussion in the later session. For all the participants, you can, uh, you can cast your questions uh, in the chat or Q&A box below. And we hope you enjoy the event. And then I would like to call upon our colleague, Mr. Roy Homri from LM, uh, youth in distress, youth, youth in distress, a uh, leading nonprofit organizations dedicated to treating and transforming the lives of troubled youth. LM works with numerous secular and religious communities, immigrants, uh, including those from the former Soviet Union and Ethiopia, and other marginalized communities. So, to Mr. Roy, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, hello and good day to all of you. Um, I'm happy and excited to be here. And I want, uh, first of all, to thank the UNCND for uh, creating this wonderful platform of learning, exchanging ideas, and creating a change and a better future for all of us. Uh, as it's been said, my name is Roy Homri. Roy Homri. I'm a national director of the street work field at LM, and I'm in charge of the outreach activity of LM. And uh, what I would like to share with you is our perspective and our knowledge about how to meet teens uh, on their own turf and how to use uh, digital tools for intervention uh, when it comes to drug use and prevention. Uh, I would use a presentation. Uh, so just a moment to share the screen in order to show you some things that we do. Just one second, please. Okay. So, um, Ellen has been in Israel for the past 40 years. It's the leading nonprofit organization, and we are addressing at risk youth ages 12 to 26. Uh, we locate those teens and young adults and help them to reintegrate into society. This is uh, our main goal. Uh, we operate over 80 programs in approximately 40 towns uh, nationwide. And we work with all different communities uh, that assemble the Israeli society. Uh, our teams uh, combined from employees and volunteers seek out at-risk youth and young people on their own turf, meaning we seek them at school, at nightclubs, in parks, in dark alleys. But uh, in 2022, teens aren't hanging only out. They are also hanging in online uh, social media platforms. And this is where they spend the vast majority of their time. Uh, over this time, we have started to work online in 2004. And over this time, we developed the ability to identify and locate struggling teens in their online environment. 
even as those environment has changed over the years, we have managed to develop the tools in order to recognize those specific things. So as I said, we've been in, from 2004 and some of you might still remember Facebook, but these days no ordinary teenager use Facebook to uh, have his own or her own identity. Uh, teenagers had adopted the online environment as part of their life and moreover as part of their identity, meaning they use social media in order to express who they are and what they do. So we decided to develop digital views in order to identify teens that need help. We also use them to connect with the teens where they feel most at home, which is the online environment. And what do we see? Uh, I'm gonna be specific to the drugs field, but I want to uh, share with you the fact that we use those tools to uh, predict and to see other phenomena of risk that are characteristic to teenagers as well. Not only drugs, but the drug use is one of the main things that we uh, use to detect uh, via uh, social media. So uh, when it comes to teenagers, it's important to, to differentiate between experimenting, which is sometimes could be a normative phenomenon for a normative phenomenon for teenagers who are going through adolescence and a, a crisis developing their own identity uh, and to see when it comes and start to create a problem. It starts to create a problem when it starts to be considered as using or abusing or uh, in the, some cases, even an addiction. Uh, what we do is we try to uh, differentiate between those who are just experimenting, which is for us, yes, there is a risk, but it's a, a normative kind of things to, to the teenagers and young adults who are using, abusing an addiction. And uh, I would like to share with you the way that we do it using digital tools. So the first thing that we do is we use NLP tools. NLP meaning natural language processing. We have bots that uh, scan public sites in which teenagers uh, uh, use to share their questions and their identity and thoughts. So we have bots, it's a mechanism uh, operated by a big data mechanism and AI, artificial intelligence, in order to analyze and scan those texts. Those who we uh, consider as being using or abusing or even suffer from addiction, we pop out to the next level of manual analysis. This manual analysis seek and read the actual text that was uh, uh, sorted from advance by the bot, by the robot. And in return, they reply with an answer uh, toward the one who has published the knowledge. This way we can be proactive in a way. They didn't necessarily address us, but we using those digital tools thought that they might be at a certain risk when it comes to, to drugs and drug use. And in return, we respond to them and we send them an, a call offering them to call us, uh, leaving contact details so they could contact, uh, connect to us all in the digital surrounding. We have an Instagram profile, we have a Facebook, we have a site, and we leave them the option to pick in which kind of a platform they want to be in touch with us. Uh, percentage wise, uh, from every hundred uh, addresses that we send, among 28% uh, return our call for the first one, and 13% these days are uh, getting in touch and uh, whether they are being addressed to services all in the digital platform uh, or being given the service from us uh, on the digital platform. Uh, it could be even uh, close to therapy on the digital platform uh, that is operated by our teams at uh, LM. Uh, the other major use that we do in, sorry, just one second. 
is uh, using uh, social media networks, in this case, uh, Instagram. What we do is in Instagram is uh, we see the input that comes from our teams, uh, from our beneficiaries, and we do an assessment. We want to see uh, what is the status of drug use of this person, uh, and if we decide it's all being held by manual screening, meaning people, our teams do manual screening for profiles of teenagers. And we try again to detect whether this teenager is pointing out the drug use as part of his normative life, or is there a certain amount of risk? And I will show you some examples. Uh, for us, uh, uh, just a, a picture of someone who's holding a joint it's not a big deal, especially when we scan the other photos and read the text that they published, okay? But for example, here, uh, there's a barrier of the Hebrew language, okay? We are processing Hebrew language, obviously. But what you can see here is someone that used uh, the drugs to mask her feelings, okay? In order, she, she doesn't want to deal with her reality. And this is what she pointed out at the, test, uh, at the text, So. Uh, for us, this is uh, on the verge of abuse or might be abused because she used drugs to mask her feelings and her emotions. I'll now present another example of these teenagers. Uh, these are teenagers that we track. I don't know if you are able to see the photos, but on one, she smokes a bang. And on the other one, you can see bang. You can see medications, uh, Ritalin, which is a... Uh, uh, there's a lot of teenagers that use Ritalin not as they used to. They sniff it instead of swallow it in order to get stoned. Then we see lightning. And you can probably see that she declares that this is my afternoon snack. For this kind of young adult, what we will try to do is we'll try to uh, get in touch with her via messages, text, uh, doing likes. And we will uh, like to create a face-to-face -face contact with her. Uh, meaning, just one second. Uh, we will try first to connect uh, via the social media to build trust and then to seek out uh, a way to create an offline uh, connection with her because this is a girl that, in our policy or our belief, needs a treatment. She's in a much severe. Uh, uh, the stress level uh, due to drug use. According, again, to her social media uh, um, persona. Uh, last example that I wanted to share with you was uh, this. Those are invitations to raves, uh, nature parties, which are usually uh, combines the use of drugs, a lot of drugs. Uh, with the party. Actually, I just came from one of those party today. Uh, and what we do is we seek for invitations. Then we track down those who goes to the party. We seek to go to parties that a lot of teenagers and young adults want to attend. We then in return follow on those teens and try to be in touch with them. And just for example, this is one of the teens that we track down via invitation to a party. So food invitation to the party, we track down this teenager who you can probably see from the pictures does a lot of drugs within the parties. And from that point, our team has reached the actual party. This is the party where he was at. We have a harm reduction team that goes out into uh, parties that are in the nature. And I'm, I'm a team member of uh, this team and we create a harm reduction uh, compound within the party, allowing them first to get first emotional aid uh, when it comes to uh, crises that are evolving from the drug use, and then be in touch with them back in the communities that they came from, okay? And I think that for now, our biggest challenge when it comes to digital is to have smarter digital screening uh, using, again, AI and uh, big data and uh, scanning that can identify images and text combining with images. 
it's a challenge for us because the language in Israel, uh, main language is Hebrew and Hebrew does not have a big database that uh, allow us to use uh, artificial intelligence well, as well as it in Arabic, for example, or in English. And we want to develop an algorithm that can read Instagram and TikTok because those are the main two networks, social networks within uh, teenagers are in these days. Um, so to summarize it maybe, uh, our goal is to meet the teenagers where they are and to use a whole variety of tools, human and digital, in order to be in touch with them within the digital uh, media because their online is in life actually and we need to be where they are. So thank you so much for the listening and I will be happy to answer questions if there are any. Sure, thank you, uh, Mr. Roy, for delivering such valuable experiences from LM, which I, I believe we can all learn from. And because Mr. Roy needs to be in another meeting, we will invite uh, probably one to two questions for him uh, right now. We already have um, one question. Um, what is, uh, so Mr. Roy, what is yes. the name of the program uh, that LM use to automatically scan for keywords and send automated messages on social media? So it was a program that was developed here in Israel, uh, especially with us, uh, with the NGO. Uh, we like to, uh, to, to create projects that combine the business uh, world with the NGO world in order to develop the, the, the platform. So it's not a tool that is there for everyone in need, and therefore it has no specific name. Having said that, though, there are such tools, even for the big companies as Facebook and Instagram. And I think that if we as a whole, NGOs from global, uh, worldwide would uh, combine our efforts in order to uh, ask for help of the uh, business, the big business companies, such as Facebook and Amazon, and Google, they have the tools and we need to push them uh, forward in order to help us to help, uh, again, create a change in a better world. Mm -hmm. And see, there's a second question uh, from Christina. Christina, thank you for asking about uh, when we go to parties, uh, do we stop the parties? So no, we do not. Uh, actually stopping the party the are on the uh, substance uh, might be, uh, actually risky for them because they most, most of the time they already took the drugs. So if you set them free and allow them to go on the cars and go out, you risk them even more than just by staying in the party. Uh, what we do is we give a set of tools to examine the quality of the drug. We give knowledge about if they choose to do drugs, what not to mix with other things. Uh, if someone does it for the first time, we advise him to come and sit with us before he use, he or she uses. Uh, we give a mental escort uh, to those who deal with psychedelic crisis due to the drugs effect. And uh, there's a compound which, in which they can rest and be less exposed to all the, the music and the loud sounds and colors, which uh, a lot of times are characteristic to those kind of parties. And uh, these are just part of the support that we give uh, within the party. And we also offer them escort after the party. We try to get details from them and we get in touch after the party to see how they are and whether they would like to get some help. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, right. Thank you for your um, uh, answers. So um, Roy has highlighted that um, how youth nowadays is utilizing social media and how LM actually reach out to them and um, help them. Um, your work, uh, I, I, to us, I think it's incredible because um, like you said, you can come to the party and you can actually help them. And that is is what actually we need to do nowadays for the youth. So uh, for you, uh, and then, and I also believe that you have some somewhere else to do. 
Um, so we thank you for your um, participation and also for your valuable um, uh, information. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Roy. So um, next we will uh, we will have uh, our next presenter. I would like to invite um, our colleague, uh, Dr. Hari Nugroho from the Green Crescent Indonesia, a medical doctor with experience in addiction medicine and currently is working in the Indonesian National Narc Narcotics Agency, whom I believe he has met a lot of uh, young people every day. So uh, to Dr. Hari Nugroho, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Rida. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, to all the participants. Uh, I'm really excited to be here and uh, to share our uh, experience also uh, in digital intervention, particularly in Indonesian perspective. And before that, I will share my screen first. So, uh, can I confirm that uh, you can see my slide, Dr. Rita? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay. Okay, yeah, as, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Hari Nugroho. I'm a medical doctor and uh, actually uh, working for uh, Indonesian National Narcotic Board. It is uh, the government agency that uh, uh, have uh, that has a duty in the in the context of uh, substance use disorder, uh, not only about uh, law enforcement but also about uh, uh, treatment. Uh, and then uh, in this evening, uh, in Indonesian time, I will talk about the uh, Indonesian perspective of uh, digital intervention. So uh, if we talk about uh, digital intervention in substance use disorder, actually this is not new. Uh, in the field of uh, substance use disorder, because uh, in the past, uh, we know we have like a, a web-based uh, intervention, uh, self-help intervention uh, based on uh, cognitive behavioral therapy or uh, part of uh, motivational enhancement therapy. And also we have uh, like a mobile application uh, uh, and based on CBT and MI also. But uh, the result of this intervention actually makes, uh, but generally uh, there are, uh, there were some uh, evac uh, like uh, uh, in, the, in the use, uh, the reduction, uh, the reduction of uh, alcohol use and then also for the cannabis use and uh, tobacco use. But uh, this is uh, actually uh, quite challenging with when we uh, deliver like a digital intervention in SUD terms or in SUD context, because uh, yeah, the, there is a, we know that uh, people with SUD, uh, they, they get a lot of stigma and then uh, they, they cannot uh, access the treatment. But with the digital intervention, I think uh, it is uh, like a chance uh, to the people with SUD to get the treatment. But uh, this current situation, because of uh, COVID-19, uh, the access to, to the treatment also uh, become more limited uh, because of like a uh, health protocol, like uh, uh, physical distancing and many uh, treatment centers, uh, they have to close uh, their facilities because uh, yeah, lack of funding and then uh, lack of uh, staff uh, that going to the facility. But uh, some of uh, treatment center, they try to make adjustment and provide like a telehealth or a telemedicine or maybe a, like a online counseling, uh, including in Indonesia. And uh, to give you context uh, about uh, Indonesia, uh, so we can see here, uh, the map of Indonesia actually, Indonesia consists of uh, a lot of islands and uh, our territory uh, mainly uh, is a water. 
So this is uh, also challenging for us to deliver treatment uh, uh, around Indonesia because uh, this geographic uh, limitation. And uh, most of uh, the treatment center actually uh, uh, provided in uh, provided in Java Island, uh, like in this uh, like in this island, and uh, in this uh, in the eastern Indonesia, we like uh, have uh, limited access to treatment because of uh, limited uh, facilities, limited clinic that provide uh, substance uh, use disorder treatment. But uh, Indonesia, with the National Narcotic Board, uh, currently has like uh, uh, more than 200 uh, clinics and uh, six uh, residential treatment. But uh, in the terms of COVID-19, uh, we, we, uh, we have to see uh, the opportunity to deliver uh, digital intervention because uh, in Indonesia right now, uh, even though our population uh, more than uh, 250 million, but uh, the mobile uh, or cellular connection actually, it, it is uh, more than 300 million because uh, Indonesian people, uh, they, they tend to have like a two mobile phone uh, yeah, to do something else uh, to, uh, yeah, to, uh, yeah, they, they, they actually, they uh, have uh, more than one uh, mobile phone and the internet user in Indonesia uh, right now uh, is about like uh, 200 million. So this is this is a, a, a challenge and also an opportunity to uh, deliver a digital intervention. And uh, we, uh, from the research, uh, the main reason uh, for using the internet uh, actually for Indonesian is uh, finding information. Uh, most of them just like uh, googling, and then uh, they 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 try to yeah uh, using a uh, social media also. And uh, the social media platform in Indonesia mainly uh, people using WhatsApp. It is more than uh, eighty percent, and then they they also use Instagram, uh, Facebook, and also TikTok. And uh, so uh, because of uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we try uh, in Indonesia, uh, our clinics uh, try to uh, make an adjustment. And also with the UNODC and uh, Ministry of Health and other uh, NGO, uh, we try to uh, like uh, make a, a guideline, a guideline to uh, deliver treatment uh, during the COVID-19 pandemics including uh, the guideline about uh, telehealth or uh, teleconsultation. So uh, usually uh, because of uh, most of Indonesian using WhatsApp, so we try uh, in our clinic uh, to do screening and assessment using a video call via WhatsApp. And also uh, our Ministry of Health also has a mobile application to do uh, screening uh, basic uh, the basic platform is uh, using uh, ASIS uh, from uh, WHO. And to do online counseling or telehealth, we also use uh, WhatsApp uh, video call for individual counseling. And sometimes uh, we also use like a Zoom meetings, uh, like uh, right now uh, for the uh, group uh, counseling or group uh, therapy. And uh, in the context of uh, prevention, uh, to maximize uh, to delivering uh, the message of uh, uh, to avoid uh, drug abuse, we we also use uh, like a Instagram uh, or or another social media like a TikTok, and uh, usually we 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 did like a live health talk about uh, substance use disorder, uh, how to avoid substance uh, abuse, and all uh, and etc. And then uh, our uh, in, in in my agency uh, BNN uh, we also like uh, make a competition to uh, uh, to to the to the community to uh, make a, like a reels video or a TikTok video 
uh, that contain uh, a message for uh, not using uh, drugs or uh, to avoid uh, drug use. And uh, from uh, from a study uh, that uh, uh, analyze uh, uh, analyze uh, people that uh, people in recovery that using TikTok, it also uh, uh, like a uh, the study of one interesting uh, things that uh, people in uh, recovery uh, that uh, they they maybe they they make a video to uh, to tell their story about uh, when they 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 are uh, using drugs and then uh, they they are in recovery they they get like uh, uh, the activities that uh, rewarding for them so it can help them to. Uh, stay uh, sober uh, they it can help them to uh, uh, to to uh, yeah uh, get like uh, maybe the support the environment from the comments and also from yeah the likes uh, uh, in the TikTok so uh, I think uh, in delivering a digital intervention uh, particularly in Indonesia there are some uh, challenges that uh, we address uh, the first one is uh, about uh, patient adherence uh, because uh, yeah people tend to like uh, drop out from uh, from the the system or, or from the the treatment program and then uh, we also has a problem with internet connection uh, because uh, like uh, like in the eastern Indonesia uh, there are some, uh, yeah, maybe a limited uh, internet connection, and uh, the problem, uh, the other problem is uh, device availability, because uh, even though, yeah, uh, in general, uh, Indonesian people tend to have uh, more than one, uh, uh, maybe like a mobile phone or a tablet or a laptop. But uh, in the context of uh, people uh, with SUD, uh, some some of uh, these people actually uh, living in uh, poverty. So uh, this is our uh, challenge. Also, our challenge also to deliver a, a digital uh, intervention. Even though uh, with the yeah, a digital intervention is uh, also uh, of course uh, beneficial for us to. Uh, to uh, give uh, the access to the treatment uh, for people with substance uh, use disorder. And the other uh, challenge for us actually about confidentiality. So yeah, we we use like a, a not ideal platform to deliver like a telemedicine or telehealth. So we, we just use like a WhatsApp or, or maybe a Zoom that, yeah, you know, uh, about the confident uh, confidentiality is yeah uh through through this media also uh, uh become a challenge and then uh yeah people when when people uh going to the one-on-one -on -one session or individual session they they like to uh yeah they they, they maybe they don't uh yeah they they uh yeah they they're comfortable with that but when uh it goes to like a group session or uh, like a, in the in the Zoom uh, session. They they uh, yeah they 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 also uh, uh, yeah they they uh, become uh, more uh, aware about uh, the confidentiality. So uh, digital intervention in Indonesia uh, they, uh, in some uh, aspect uh, it. It's very beneficial uh, for us uh, actually to give uh, them the access of the treatment, but also we we of course we have uh, like uh, some uh, challenges to deliver uh, this uh, innovation. But yeah, we try to make yeah more uh, engagement uh, through a digital platform, particularly for the prevention. Uh, by uh, yeah, utilize, uh, utilize, uh, uh, maximizing uh, using Instagram or uh, TikTok. I think uh, that is uh, my presentation today, and uh, I give back to Dr. Rita. Thank you. 
Well, thank you, um, Dr. Harry, for the interesting notes that you have outlined that actually digital intervention are not new. We have been using it for quite some time, but you also highlighting that we still have many challenges in reaching the positive outcome from patient adherence, the connectivity itself, the capacity of the devices, and also uh, the important one is data security. So many thanks for that. And I hope you could stay up until the discussion session later in, uh, in this event. And next speaker, we will have our colleague from ESLI from the Turkish Grand Crescent, Mr. Kemal Alpin, who will present another interesting, interesting topic about the mechanism and approaches on using digital tools for prevention of addiction from the Turkish uh, Green Crescent experience. So to Mr. Kemal, uh, the, uh, please, the floor is yours, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Riada. Uh, it's nice to see all of you. Uh, today, I'm going to share the Turkish Green Crescent approach uh, on using digital tools for prevention. Uh, so let's first talk about the darkest trends in the world, uh, especially in the pandemic time. Uh, in the last nine years, uh, drug use uh, increased from 210 million to 270 million. Uh, there's also a significant increase in the proportion too. Uh, number of users increased from 4.8% uh, to 5.3% uh, until the 2018. And furthermore, according to World Drug Report in 2019, uh, existing uh, drug users are increased uh, from 29 million to 35 million only within three years. Uh, I will just uh, remark this remarkable increase here, actually, within a few years. So it seems like the drug supply became more digitalized. And there's a, there's a, uh, picture here that we received from the World Drug Report of 2001, uh, sorry, 2021. Uh, so this clearly shows the, the size of the sorry, internet. Me, sir, Kemal. Sorry, yeah. Mr. Kemal. Uh, yeah, I think your, your, your presentation, your slide is not moving. Can you um, right share now? It? It's still in the first page. Let me share it again. I'm trying again. How about now? Um, I think it's still freeze. No, yeah, now it works. Now it works, sorry. Okay. Okay, you okay. may continue. Sorry for that. So uh, I think you see the picture right now on the right side. Uh, probably you've seen this before, but this, this clearly shows the size of the internet uh, size of the clear web, dark web, and the deep web. Uh, on, the, on the black part, in the very deep here, you can see the dark web, where, where especially the young users can reach uh, the illicit drugs from the internet. And uh, the drug market became more visible, and accessibility to drugs became easier than ever before. Because anyone in the world, especially the young people, became, uh, become a potential user. Uh, for the drug uh, suppliers. So drug marketing methods have been evolved to become more aggressive uh, and inaccurate information about drug harms has been spread widely through the misinformation strategies. Uh, drug production and trafficking appears to have adapted rapidly to pandemic related restrictions. I will give more details regarding this later on. Uh, even we, in the last two years, we have rules like social distancing. Uh, the markets have affected uh, by retail drug dealing and adoption of new technologies to facilitate uh, drug distribution. Uh, so finally, the ma market is becoming digitally enabled, enabled to reach the drugs. So we have a few uh, key takeaways here. Uh, with the onset of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the means through the through the which people access illicit drugs have diversified from the conventional methods, and the digitalization digitalization of the market added to a new dimension to the problem. Uh, on the other hand, the increasing rates of people who received counseling services from Green Crescent Counseling Service 
show that the effects of pandemic on people uh, who use substance use and the results indicate that both globally and in Turkey, people have resorted to alcohol, opioids, cannabis as a means of escaping stress of COVID-19. So uh, what's Green Crescent's approach here as a Centennial NGO? Uh, we as Green Crescent would like to stop this cycle perpetuated by harmful industries and their targeting future generations. Uh, we believe that our children and youth deserve much better as they will constitute our future generations that deserve to have happy, healthy, and fulfilling lives. So this is not only a wish, we are uh, working on that. Uh, the, we therefore both work for our youth and uh, with them in our prevention and treatment rehabilitation services uh, in all encompassing and holistic approach. Uh, in Green Crescent, we do believe in early prevention. Uh, we do believe in that the early prevention is the best policy, which is also the most cost, cost effective one. Uh, we know that the children, adolescents, whose brains are still developing and are particularly vulnerable to substance use. Uh, we are also aware, well aware of that, the fact that the prevention is extremely cost effective. As for every dollar spent on the prevention, at least 10 can be saved in the future health, social and crime costs. So what we are doing practically in Green Crescent uh, on digital platforms, uh, so we have an addi addiction prevention training program. Uh, addiction prevention training program is a science-based education program uh, that aims to prevent individuals who use drugs and we purpose to decrease the number of potential users, especially we are focusing on children and young people. Uh, addiction, addiction prevention training program has a great outreach as it addresses such large target audience for the first time. And we, we carried all of our modules uh, into a distance education section, uh, which we purpose to create an awareness, especially among young people. So we also have empowerment of life skills program, uh, which purposes how to avoid any social pressure and, or internal desire for alcohol or drug intake and how to manage their own emotions both positive and negative, especially the pressures like the peer pressure, et cetera. And preventive and empowering education program that aims to reduce risk, fact risk factors towards substance use, uh, promotes positive behavioral changes and habits and develop life skills and abilities such as coping with stress, preventing negative emotions, self-discipline, effective communication, empathy, critical thinking, decision-making, and negotiation skills. So there are three main headings of empowerment of life, skill, life skills program. Those are called uh, interpersonal skills, self-knowledge, thinking and decision-making. Uh, we also have in every each city of Turkey, we have Yedam Green Crescent Counseling Service. Uh, we have a hotline for that uh, called 115. Uh, this is a free service and can be called by anyone. Uh, can anyone uh, who needs some help uh, call 115 and uh, ask for any help? So we briefly have some numbers here, what we are practically doing uh, in Yeda. We are providing free counseling services and we are also providing uh, social support services and social event services, uh, which uh, the people who are in need can have time uh, in the Yeda. Uh, Yedam is also providing job placement services who needs a job uh, to create better lives. So this is the end of my presentation at the moment. Uh, if there's any questions, I can answer. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. Um, You're welcome. Well, uh, yeah, really interesting how you pictured the internet uh, with the iceberg. And again, highlighting that prevention is really cost effective. Um, we may learn more from the Yedam counseling services, which is really interesting. And Mr. Kemal, we hope you could stay until the discussion ses session later. And dear participants, we still have one more speaker from the National Anti-Drug Union, uh, which is Ms. Mr. Maxim Poliatus. I believe Mr. Maxim is already here. So yeah, so Mr. Maxim, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you a lot. 
Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Um, let me give me one second. I will turn on the demonstration. Um, yeah. Uh, today, on behalf of the National Anti-Drug Union, uh, Alina Rudakova and I will tell you a report. Uh, we think uh, you. The, the organizers and hope for further uh, cooperation. Um, the National Anti-Drug Union is uh, studying with great attention the experience of uh, using digital technologies in the process of recovery and psychosocial rehabilitation of drug addicts in order to use them in its work as approved methods and programs. Uh, since uh, 2012, uh, the world has recorded an active increase in consumption among children and adolescents of various smoking mixtures, synthetic cannab cannabinoids. Um, among those who have been diagnosed with drug addiction syndrome uh, for the first time in their lives, more than 90% uh, are people aged uh, from 20 to 39 years old. Um, at the same time, the age of the first consumption can, can vary from 12 to 20 years. Uh, drug addiction as a disease covers an, increasement, an increasing number of teenagers every year. With the active introduction of digital technologies uh, into life, mass media, social networks, and gaming gadgets have become powerful means of forming public uh, consciousness. They can affect all spheres of life, including the consumption of narcotic substances. Uh, since they are the main source of information for potential uh, drug users about drugs and drug addiction. In social networks, uh, we think that it is not without the interest of distributors that advertising of a narcotic lifestyle can be traced. Moreover, some mass media and journalists, opinion leaders and bloggers, due to the lack of knowledge and unfortunately personal responsibility for possible consequences often make mistakes in the materials that lead not to prevention, but on the contrary to the promotion of the use of psychoactive substances. Unfortunately, they observe in many countries the absence of programs or courses for training in the creation of preventive information content that would help, not harm. Uh, I would like to pay special attention today uh, to the uh, action of uh, social networks in the minds of young people. Children and adolescents, as well as the shadow internet and individual resources, for example, uh, closed um, telegram channels, um, in order to attract more and more traffickers of narcotic substances. Today, large dealers are, to, are turning specific, specific especially uh, to young people, offering in return quite large and easy earning opportunities, rented apartments, uh, expensive phones, and so on, creating the illusion of getting rich quickly uh, without much effort. Dealers every day involve more and more underage couriers in their network, distributing small doses to pre-designated uh, pre places. Uh, the absence of fear of death and the certain romanticization of the process turn into long years of imprisonment for a teenager afterwards. The term for selling narcotic substances has been significantly increased today. The possibilities of NGOs to restrict such content and channels are small. For example, by blocking one channel, a new one uh, opens after a while. Um, they are uh, reduced to counter propaganda, attracting public attention and contacting law enforcement agencies directly. Our work in this area focuses on preventing the uh, distortion of the negative consequences of drug use in electronic networks, paying attention to specific facts. Unreli unreliable information uh, or half truth, justification for drug use, uh, whatever the reasons. Uh, in the current conditions, NGOs should not only conduct relevant work in, this, in the media, but also actively use digital technologies. After all, by the power of the impact uh, on the human uh, psyche, 
modern uh, digital gaming devices that immerse the user in virtual reality are comparable to uh, psychotherapy. The National Anti-Drug Union does not yet use devices that immerse the patient in the virtual reality, but we see certain prospects in this. We see uh, the real use of them for the treatment of drug addicts and people with mental illnesses. Virtual reality creates a new world in a person's uh, perception, affecting the brain. Putting on a headset for virtual reality and launching a program, the brain is affected in the same way as substances um, prohibited for free circulation. At the same time, unlike uh, psychotropic substances, virtual reality can be controlled. Um, research in this area is being conducted and we are closely monitoring them. As we know, for several years in China, doctors have been using this technology to help drug addicts. In the USA, virtual reality programs have been developed that help drug addicts. Scientists have managed to achieve a high level of detail of what is happening, right down to sensations to objects and disorder in the room. There are prospects, but similar virtual reality programs uh, disused as games can be created by drug producers. It is necessary to study the opportunities that have appeared so that when introducing new things, we do not defend ourselves, but attack in order to treat and not to harm. The practice of the National Anti-Drug Union in the development of preven preventive programs indicates that the most effective forms of primary prevention for children and adolescents are comprehensive preventive programs. Play classes for younger children, training sessions for children aged six years, lectures for parents, training sessions for teachers, and training of volunteers to form the core of support for prevention programs. Preventive programs aimed at children and adolescents teach critical thinking, the ability to make decisions and resist in situations of the supply of psychoactive substances. Uh, we believe that only the joint efforts of civil society, um, legislative uh, law enforcement authorities, the media, and individual uh, educational uh, psychologists can stop the growth of uh, drug addiction in Russia. This is what we wanted to say about this theme. If there are any questions, let me know. Okay, uh, Mr. Maxim, um, thank you for your presentation. So I would like to, um, let's move on to the next agenda, which is the discussion. So we would like to invite all speakers uh, to the stage and answer the questions one by one. But I think with, lim with limited times, I believe, I think we only have um, around five to seven minutes. So let's check on um, the Q&A box. Um, okay, uh, we have one question from Christiana Bebre. Um, Current evidence shows that public anti-drug campaigns in the media may actually have adverse effects such as encouraging interest in drugs amongst the most in innocent young people who have not used drug yet. Is this something you take into account in developing uh, your public real messages? And how do you overcome these challenges of disseminating messages about drugs in a digital space when never users are also present? I think this is an interesting question. I, I believe um, all all speakers can answer this. So uh, I would I would like to invite Dr. Hari first, maybe. Yeah, uh, this is also our uh, challenge to yeah to make a balance uh, information between uh, yeah. Uh, about uh, about drug use that encourage uh, maybe young people to uh, use and uh, how to give them the the, the information for uh, to avoid like a uh, drug abuse. So uh, that's why uh, yeah in, in Indonesia uh, particularly in uh, my office uh, National Narcotic Board uh, we try to uh, yeah to make a make a challenge to the society also. To like uh, make a Instagram post uh, posting or Instagram reels or uh, maybe like a TikTok 
uh, video uh, how uh, the society also uh, 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 join us uh, to prevent uh, drug use uh, with their their uh, their creativity to deliver the message of uh, how to avoid uh, drug abuse and also how to uh, uh, how to uh, promote like a healthy lifestyle because in Indonesia uh, right now uh, young people tend to use like a social media to buy uh, uh, drugs yeah? uh, not only from the dark web actually but also uh, from the Instagram uh, we have a lot of a lot of cases of uh, youngsters that uh, buying uh, synthetic cannabinoid from the Instagram and also uh, from the other marketplace uh, that uh, they, they, they sell like uh, uh, benzodiazepine also uh, uh, synthetic cannabinoid also so uh, this is a quite a challenges uh, quite a challenging uh, for us uh, but uh, we try to uh, make uh, the society to join us uh, with their creativity uh, to deliver uh, the message of uh, uh, how to avoid uh, drug abuse and also how to promote a healthy lifestyle. I think that is my answer, Dr. Rido. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hari. Well, our, for, unfortunately, um, we, uh, we have exceeded our time. Uh, there are a couple of questions that haven't been uh, answered, but I actually already uh, typed the answer that maybe you can reach Dr. Hari through his email and you can reach uh, Mr. Kemal from Green Crescent, Turkey, and as uh, as well as uh, Mr. Maxim. So um, we thank everyone for, um, we thank all the speakers for the updated information, um, really in interesting and also enriching. On behalf of Green Crescent Indonesia and the, com the community, we thank you for your active participation. Should you need more uh, information and clarification, you, you may contact Yesi Lai and also the Green Crescent Indonesia. So good evening, um, everyone. Um, see you in the maybe uh, next year. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank you. Hello. Bye, thank you. Goodbye, everyone.